This video is going to talk about how to solve the Mathological Liar game. Mathological Liar is a whodunit where there is a case that is presented on a card that looks like, well, I, you can't see where I'm pointing, well, you kind of can, that looks like this. This happens to be the case of the mi mixed up maypole. Uh, you may see that some of the cards are orange, some of the cards are green. Those are the two sets that I have. Today we're going to go with a green one for the purpose of just kind of showing you an example. So we first have a court case. We have something that has been brought forward. Mrs. Fredericks asked Mr. Palmer to build a maypole in the schoolyard. Today is May Day and the children are supposed to dance around the maypole because that's what we do. Someone decorated the maypole this morning. Now it's raining. Mrs. Fredericks wants to know who decorated the pole too early. Who decorated the maypole and how do you know? Well, this case that's on here is written on the back side of every card in this case number seven, the case of the mixed up maypole. On the back of each case, are essentially the witness or the suspect statements. There are four people who have a statement here and it's our job to figure out which statements check out mathematically. If the statement checks out mathematically and the math works, that means that that person is not guilty. People aren't generally called innocent in court, they're called not guilty of the crime they've been accused of. Now, if the math is wrong, that means that that person is guilty of the crime. You want to make sure that you get the guilty people and the non-guilty people correctly identified because you don't want to send someone off to jail who is not guilty and you don't want to let someone who is guilty walk free. It's very important in this mathematical game. So, every, every case has at least one person who is guilty. Sometimes it's two people, sometimes it's three people, sometimes it's all four but everyone has at least one guilty person. So if you don't find anybody guilty, you should probably go back and check the math. So let's look at Mrs. Palmer's statement first, or I'm sorry, Mr. Palmer's statement first. Mr. Palmer says, I built the pole, but I had nothing to do with the ribbons and flowers. I put five rows of hooks with eight hooks in each row for the ribbons. That way they could hang 40 ribbons from the pole. Now there's no math question in here, you're checking Mr. Palmer's math. So are five rows of ribbons with eight hooks in each? Is that 40? Is five times eight 40? Yes it is, Mr. Palmer checks out. He is not guilty. Let's go ahead and let's look at Rick. Rick says in that very clear picture, I'm not in a hurry, oh, let's see if we can fix it. A Little bit better. I'm not in a hurry to dance around a flowery pole. I carried 11 boxes of flowers into school. There were 10 flowers in each box. That means there are 100 flowers on that pole. 11 boxes with 10 flowers each. Is 11 times 10 a hundred? No. That means that Rick, there's something off with his statement. Rick is guilty. We still have to check the other two though, so let's keep going in clockwise order. Mr. Troy down here says, I tried teaching the kids to dance. I tried teaching those kids to dance. Ooh. I broke the kids into three groups with eight kids each. Do you know how few times all 24 kids showed up? Three groups with eight kids each, that'd be three times eight, is three times eight 24? Yes, it is, Mr. Troy. His statement checks out. Could have been phrased a little bit better, but it checks out. Then we get to Regina. Regina says, there should be extra ribbon. We had 12 rolls of ribbon, and each roll contained enough ribbon for six streamers. That means there was enough ribbon for 62 streamers. Is 12 times six, 62. Ooh, let's think about this. Let's really do the math. A lot of times you're gonna have to do your math on here. So let's go ahead and let's write down 12 times six because we've never done this one before. Uh-oh, looks like Regina forgot to carry that one. 
the math should actually be 12 times 6 should actually be 72, which means Regina's statement, there's something wrong with it, which, which means that Regina is also guilty. So in this court case, Rick and Regina would be guilty. Mr. Palmer and Mr. Troy would both be not guilty. Now, when you do this on a form, there would be like a Google, a Google form or however I'd ask you to turn it in. You would go ahead and explain the reason why each person was guilty or not guilty. So you would back up your answers with work. Looking forward to it.